Tell me why anybody, including myself, should believe in Dan Campbell at the moment. We got Derek. Only one person has had the balls to call in so far. And yeah, you could say you need playmakers to close out these games, but I'm sorry, Jeff. Excuse me? Uh, you've been shut out the last three halves. I don't think it's a defensive issue. Seems to me like your coach just can't get it all together and happen all at once. We got Derek. Only one person has had the balls to call in so far. Shout out to Derek. And I'm hoping Derek actually is calling in to justify Dan. If not, I'm going to hang up on him. So, Derek, appreciate you calling out from San Antonio. How are you doing this morning? And please tell me why I should believe in Dan Campbell. Thanks for calling, Derek. Yeah, the reason I, um, I called in again is I, I do think Campbell can turn it around. Um, man, it's, it's pretty grim and low right now. But I do think it's going to take some real internal – Moves. He's, I think he's going to continue after move. I think he's going to have to move on from AG. He's going to have to move on from some other things and just change maybe the identity, kind of just like how Jim Harbaugh had to do after his first years at, at U of M. Obviously, well, Jim Harbaugh had a way better record coming in. Well, yeah. let, let me ask you something then, because uh, I'll tell you from my perspective what that tells me. Uh, if I'm a prominent up-and-coming defensive or offensive coordinator, let's say, why would I want to go work for the head coach who can't even keep a coordinator in the job for over a year outside of Aaron Glenn unless he gets hired or, excuse me, fired this season. Uh, for me, that's not something I'm interested or a person I'm interested in working for. And then with Harbaugh, I mean, he committed to Don Brown for six, seven years, and it wasn't until after the sixth and seventh year that he finally said, you know what, new people, in comes McDonald, new vision, new identity, new swag, new everything about us. But Harbaugh was having success, and not, it's not like he was a losing coach. Campbell's a losing coach who, what, he's going to get rid of another defensive coordinator, so he's gotten rid of the two original hires. He's now going to bring in new people. Uh, I don't see it, Derek. Yeah, well, yeah, no, that, completely valid point. I guess the only counter that I could push to that is, obviously he got rid of Anthony Lynn last year, and when he started calling the plays, we saw a big change in the offense. Obviously, he's no longer doing that. You know, the, the offensive coordinator and Ben seem to be doing pretty well. But he had to get a little bit more involved on there. And maybe he just needs to he's, – he's a younger coach. Obviously, he doesn't have that history like Harbaugh had. Um, and it, if, we're, if we're gutting out some other stuff – and I hate calling it a rebuild because they ain't rebuilding from anything. It's – but, man, they, they've, they've got to do something – um, I don't know. Fair enough. Well, look, Derek. I think, yeah, I, I mean, outside of the outside of the the New England game, you know, the they they the games have been a lot closer than they have in the past. Um, although you're right, there's no W's in the win column, and that's a problem in this league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think again, uh, I can point to maybe a lot of improvements I've seen. But the problem is when there are no tangible results, Derek. It's it's hard for me to sit up here and. And say, oh yeah, like you know what, one and six, four nineteen and one, oh eleven and one on the road. I'm, I'm confident in where it's going. I I can't lie. I, I just I can't do yeah. it. Yeah. No, I, I I'm with you. Like I'm, I'm like I don't like telling you this. But yeah. I, mean, and, and I, I know. think it's easy. I think it's easy to want Derek, to move a I promise direction. you, I would prefer to be up here talking yeah. about a four and three football team and how Dan Campbell is proving uh, doubters and he's he's looking uh, like man, he's going I, in the right I direction. Know. Even a three and four, I mean, yeah, whatever um, it is. And Derek, to your point, yeah. too, about these close games, it'd be nice to have some defensive playmakers that could close these games. I mean, to your point, um, it's hard when you yeah. don't have any talent defensively, but there's a lot. There's also a lot of context with, with coaching decisions and, and second-half adjustments, yeah. which are a problem, but I get where you're going with it. But some of it's also on the players, too. I mean, right. I mean they're a great right. team, I think, but at the end of the day, you're a professional athlete. Right. I need you to perform and execute the basics. Lining up offsides. <laughs> that's not a coaching error. Like, that's on the player, man. Like, it, you knew learn that in high school football. It, it is pathetic. Again, um, but I think you would appreciate this, Derek, is, uh, yes, the individual player is responsible. Uh, but, you know, if a teacher is coaching history class and she has the lowest performing average grade, uh, that is her fault, not the student's. Uh, yes, the student's nope. may be bad, but Com you are held accountable Completely at the fair. end of the day. So. Completely fair. Completely All right, well, fair. appreciate you, Derek. Thanks for calling in, buddy. All right, thanks, guys. Take care.
You know, uh, one of the other things he said um, that was interesting was, uh, again, talent and, you know, how far you can get. At the end of the day, whether I like it or not, they're one and six. I would much rather be talking about a three and four or four and three football team that looks like they're taking the right steps. They're on pace to win six, seven football games. Uh, everybody's confident in the build, what the moves are in the off season. The coach is winning road games. He's closing out these close games. And yeah, you could say you need playmakers to close out these games, but I'm sorry, Jeff, excuse me. Uh, you've been shut out the last three halves. I don't think it's a defensive issue. Seems to me like your coach just can't get it all together and happen all at once. And right. that's why you're losing games, which the head coach is responsible for. Let's go to Craig out in Atlanta. Craig, you're on the morning show. Tell me why anybody, including myself, should believe in Dan Campbell at the moment. You there, Craig? He's cooked. Yep. He's cooked. You hear me? Yep, I yep. hear you now. We can hear you. Okay. Okay, yeah, I, I don't think you should believe in him, and I, I think we should make a move sooner than later. Um, you know, keep him as long as we're shopping for a coach, but as soon as we find somebody that we have confidence in, I think we need to pull the trigger. I'm with you, and you know what, Craig, I, I want to make this comment with you on the phone. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of good people that tune in, smart people watch the show. Paul Thomas, for example, says, uh, giving 100% of the blame to Dan, uh, I don't believe is accurate. The GM is ultimately responsible for that record. And that's where I kind of disagree with most people. I want your thoughts. Les Snead was a losing GM prior to Sean McVay. He had six consecutive losing seasons, I believe, prior to Sean McVay showing up. Sean McVay showed up. They haven't had a losing season since. So I, I do not attribute the wins and losses to a GM, I I evaluate my GMs on their draft picks, the way they handle the salary cap, where they don't botch it and or they fix it like he has done, the trades he makes, the moves he makes, and then ultimately two of the most important things a GM can ever do, Craig, a hire a head coach and draft a quarterback, which he's yet to do. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I like Brad Holmes. I like what he's doing out there. You know, I think that he, he made a good decision with Hawkinson. He's never lived up to his draft pick of being a top 10 guy. He was about to ask for top five money. Um, so I think that it was a good deal. We gave up, you know, the two fourth rounders for a second and a third. And I think that's going to help. Um, but yeah, I like Brad. I think that he's, you know, not SOL at all. I think he's a mover and a shaker. I'm glad he's, he's with us. Appreciate it, Craig. Well done. Thank you so much for calling in, buddy. Have a good rest of your day. Appreciate you, Craig. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We got a few minutes before we have to take a pause. So I want to continue the conversation uh, coming out. All right. We'll continue. We got a few people, Matt, Jason, and Luke on the line. We'll get to all of them. Uh, I Again, you guys know me. You know me by now. I've used my business reference, typically the Netflix reference. Paul, I know you agree, and I appreciate you acknowledging the fair point but I do not believe the GM is the CEO. I do not. I believe the head coach is. Mike Tomlin doesn't have a winning record for all these years and never a losing season because of the GM. If you have that dude in the building, at head coach, everything else works. It compensates for a lot of things. That's just the reality. Right. Again, less need. He was technically a losing GM with, I believe, Spagnola and then Jeff Fisher. And boom, McVay walks in, they hit the ground running. A coach that actually knew what to do with the young core players that they had. It's, like, you know? it's like Atlanta. They trade away all their foundational pieces. They just got rid of Kellen Ridley uh, by the trade deadline, and it does not matter. And it's not Arthur Smith is still figuring it out. If Arthur Smith, it was a horrendous he season. He took over a 4-12 and team. They were worse than Detroit when right. he took over. Right. All they have is draft. They, they... 11-14 and 14 as a head coach.